see if I can get my birds to cooperate. So these are my parrots. This is Cricket, and that one's Zoot. This one's a green cheek conure, and this one's a cockatiel. And my presentation today is on responsible parrot ownership. Parrots make great pets. They talk, they're very playful, they're very cuddly, and when they're raised with humans, they're extremely social. But the problem is that the desirability of parrots as pets is actually putting wild parrot populations into extreme danger. Some, you might think, of the, like, the scarlet macaw as being a really common bird, but the fact is that the scarlet macaw is actually really endangered in the wild. Um, according to Christina Holvey of BBC, um, she estimates that there's 300 to 400 wild scarlet macaws actually flying around right now in Guatemala, Mexico, and Belize. That's how few they are. Let me grab my bird. He likes my desk. Sit here. You're in this video. So we really need to look at responsible parrot ownership if we're going to look at owning a parrot, taking care of a parrot. Um, you need to know how to properly buy a parrot, and then how to care for the parrot once you have the parrot. So, as for me, I've always loved birds. Um, I've had birds since I was a girl. Um, I've taken care of or been involved with five cockatiels now, two parakeets, a lovebird, um, my green cheek conure a lesser sulfur cockatoo, lesser, lesser sulfur crested cockatoo, and a blue-eyed cockatoo who is actually, he keeps getting my desk, a really rare bird. Um, she's actually close to endangered, and I was able to take care of her at Papua New Guinea. So the important things to know if you own a parrot, they get into trouble all the time. Um, <laughs> first, make sure you don't buy an illegally imported parrot, and this is really the big deal nowadays with parrot owners. A lot of people that love birds and want birds really don't ever look into this. And so this is actually an increasing problem in the world right now. Um, parrots are just being wiped out in the wild because people are, are capturing them. The native people that are capturing these birds and smuggling into the United States for sale as pets. Or as breeders to breed chicks. So, I mean, think about it. Parrots are really valuable. Um, this guy right here... He's worth about $250 to $350, okay? The scarlet macaw I mentioned earlier that's almost wiped out in the wild right now, and they're one of the most popular, you know, you see them on the shoulder of every pirate in every pirate movie ever, and those are down to like 300 birds in the wild. They go for $1,200 to $1,700 on the market, one bird. Um, African greys, which are also being wiped out in the wild right now, go from $1,500 to $1,700 per bird. Um, hyacinth macaws are one of the most expensive parrots. They're huge blue macaws. They're beautiful. Um, those guys can go up from $15,000 and up per bird, okay? So the, the smugglers have a reason to import these birds. They, you know, they make money. So what you want to do when you get a bird, if you're thinking of getting a bird, is make sure, do research on the person you're getting it from. Find out if they're being bred properly in the United States. Make sure that the person didn't get their parents or the bird themselves from some kind of wild trade. Um, one way you can do that, come here, Cricket, is, um, I don't know, probably can't see it, but he's got a little band on his leg, which is actually um, a closed band. And what that means is that there's no way to open that band. It's, um, it doesn't have a slit in it. That means that it was put on his foot when he was a super tiny little chick. And that means he is a correctly, he was born in the United States, he's a United States citizen. Um, but if you find a band on a bird that has a little slit in it, like you could pry it open with pliers, that means it was put on it, and that's a wild bird. That bird was brought in from a jungle somewhere. Um, now, before the Wild Bird Conservation Act of 1980, 1992, um, Anna Valerie, writing for One Green Planet, tells us that over 80, eight, no, 800,000 parrots per year were brought in, smuggled into the United States to be sold as pets. And these were brought in in horrible ways. They were stuffed into pan they were drugged, they were stuffed into hubcaps, they were put inside pantyhose, they were put inside toilet paper rolls, and they were just like piled into suitcases, and 40% of them died. 800,000 is counting ones that survive. So you can think of how many birds that is every year being brought out of the wilderness into pet cages all over America. Um, the most extreme 
examples is was the Spix's macaw. Um, the Spix's macaw was a really super beautiful, little friendly little macaw that actually was down in 1999, was down to 47 birds. And all of these birds were owned by collectors in Europe. None of these birds were in the wild at all. They're gone. They're extinct from the wild. There's no, none left. Um, in 2000 or so, a sheik from Saudi Arabia, she, or from Qatar, sorry, Sheikh Saad bin Mohammed, Mohammed bin Ali Al Thani um, actually purchased all of the known sphinxes macaws on earth and put them into a conservation program that he created. And he's now breeding those birds and has raised 21 chicks since 2004. So the total population of those, maca those macaws is up to 68 birds on earth. Okay? <laughs> Other endangered species include the echo, echo parakeet, um, which is down to 100 birds right now. The kakapo from New Zealand is pretty famous. They're down to 56 birds. They're slowly, you know, being very carefully watched and be, they're slowly breeding in the wild. But the point is, if you find any of these birds that are rare, even a scarlet macaw, you really need to look into where did this bird come from, who raised it, how was it bred? Because you do not want to contribute to weakening these birds in the wild or soon they just won't be in the wild anymore. And it, breeding, having them at home as a pet is not going to replenish the population very much. I mean, may, it may keep them around. I mean, the sphinxes macaw is only still here because people owned, it, owned them as pets, but do we really want to do that to all the parrot species is the question. So once you own a parrot, second thing you have to do is ask yourself, what do I do with my parrot, okay? This is the other big problem in America right now. People don't realize that parrots are not cats. They're not dogs. They're not domestic animals at all. And there's a big difference between a domestic or a tame animal and a wild animal that has been tamed, okay? Um, Jenna Briner of Live Science, um, in the article Genetic Differences Found in Wild vs. Tame Animals, talks about the differences between a wild animal and a domestic animal. And it's actually in the genes, okay? Domestication is an actual genetic modification to the genome of that animal, which will make them prefer human company. And it takes generations. It's taken thousands of years to get cats and dogs to where they are now, where they actually will prefer, even from the time they're a puppy, they'll prefer a human company. That's actually bred into them. Parrots are not like that. They do not have that breeding. Um, a couple generations ago, this guy's, parrot, this guy's parents were in Brazil somewhere. And by the way, all the parrots I own are very, very common. They're nowhere near endangered at all. In fact, they're considered pests in their, their home countries most of the time. This guy's from Brazil and this guy's from Australia. But um, these guys are still wild. They're still wild animals. They think like a wild animal. They still do all the behaviors of a wild animal, including vocalizing. Um, they have a mating season, which is right now. Actually, they're very hormonal and very difficult to control right now. But you just gotta let them be themselves, because they are wild, okay? They have a need to nest, so I give them nesting material so they can, you know, play with that. Um, you gotta realize that parrots are monogamous, they mate for life, okay? So my parrots get very jealous if I show affection to anybody else because they think I'm their mate. They need to vocalize, they need to make sounds, they need to play, they need to chew. A lot of people don't realize how much they need to chew, you have to go make a lot of toys. And they need to flock. That means they need to be with you all the time. Okay, if you don't have time for a pair, if you're going to leave it in a cage for eight hours a day, probably not a good idea. Your pair's probably going to go crazy. You have to realize these, parrot, these creatures are incredibly intelligent. Some parrots are as smart as a two-year-old child. Now, would you put a two-year-old child into a cage with no toys for eight hours a day, lock them up, and just leave them there alone? That's what a lot of people do. And that's why today, there's a huge influx of abandoned birds, abused birds, who people buy them. They have no idea that how smart these parrots are and that they have a constant need for socialization. And then they get frustrated with this bird when it goes crazy and it just freaks out because it's being mentally abused. And then they give it up to some shelter now and we have tons of shelters full of these abused birds who pluck their own feathers out because they're completely insane, okay? They're neurotic as anything. The other problem is people don't realize how long these birds live. A cockatoo, cockatoos have those big white ones, the cockatoos have been known to live for a hundred years. 
my little parakeet. I have a little blue parakeet up there. He doesn't very often come to me. Will you come to me? Let me see if he'll come to me. No, he won't. He, he's not very tame, so I just leave him up there. A parakeet that you find in a pet store can live 10 years, sometimes 20 years. 20 years is the longest known parakeet. This little guy will live 25 years. He's 9 years old right now. Okay? That means he's going to be probably be around until I'm 59 years old. Okay, so you have to realize these birds are a lifelong commitment and they're a handful. I mean, don't just buy a parrot because they're cool in a pet store. No, this is an actual wild animal. You have to know what you're doing when you get you on your head pet. I'm okay, I'm doing something right now. How would you go up here? You have to, you know, you have to realize you have to get educated before you buy a parrot. You don't just go in and say it's cute, buy it, okay? Check out the source of where the parrot is coming from. Where is that putster getting their parrot? Which breeder are they buying from? What are that breeder's policies? Do some actual research on the breeder. Look in the newspaper. See if there's been any incidences of these people bringing in wild parrots, etc. I mean, really be careful about this. And then, of course, once you have the parrot, figure out what to feed it so that it doesn't have nutritional problems, which will turn into hormonal problems. There's a lot you need to do with the parrot. So, my persuasive speech is to try to encourage people that are either interested in parrots or own parrots already, get educated. There's a lot more to owning a parrot than you think. It has nothing to do with owning a dog or, or a cat. That I mean, dogs and cats are nothing. Easy peasy compared to owning a parrot. They're a whole different ball game. So I encourage you, if you are interested, definitely get a parrot. Definitely look into adopting a parrot since there's a lot of abandoned parrots right now. But, you know, go out there, get educated look into this. It's a very important thing. Thank you very much.